Carcharodontosaurus. This early Cretaceous meat eater was the type species for a clade of theropods that were among the largest terrestrial predators this world has ever known. Called Car Carodontosauridae, you have the type specimen, Carcharodontosaurus, Meraxus, Mapusaurus, and of course, Giganotosaurus. However, all of these models are from PNSO. And we have uh, seen uh, some other specimens from other companies have uh, shown some Carcharodontosaurids, such as GR Toys slash Howland Good. Some of the other uh, companies that aren't of the uh, premium line, if you will, Collecte, etc., have all uh, shown these Carcharodontosaurids uh, in one form, one species or another. However, there is one species that I don't believe any of these companies have ever made, and that would be Tyrannotitan chubitensis. You see the uh, model before you, and uh, you're probably wondering, well, what company made this? The answer, quite simple. No company at all. This is a model that was commissioned by a gentleman named, and my friend, please forgive me if I butcher your name. I'm going to uh, give the entire name out first go round. Adamar Pereira do Nascimento. From this point forward, I'll only be using his first two names, but this gentleman, highly talented, I first saw a video of another model that he made and I was intrigued and I reached out to him because I wanted to uh, commission that uh, self same species and uh, I ended up looking through his catalog and saw other uh, other species that he uh, he does or has done and uh, lo and behold I ran into Tyranno Titan and that caught my attention immediately because to my recollection no one has made one of these and it looked good and I had to have one so I commissioned the species that I originally uh, reached out to him for and this as well and uh, you see what you have before you you can get it in uh, any number of uh, paint applications. I uh, chose this one. It looks uh, pretty uh, realistic to me and uh, I am quite happy with it. It is uh, to scale, 135th scale and it is uh, very accurate. He gives these uh, these informational cards, it's in Portuguese because uh, this uh, gentleman hails from Brazil. And um, this is very accurate. It uh, gives the, uh, the uh, size of the, uh, of the species in question. It uh, gives where it uh, existed, its diet, and... Uh, it also uh, gives the clade from which it uh, spawned from and it gives the model size as well and uh, in uh, centimeters so uh, it has uh, stated that this particular model is 35.14 centimeters so the 35.14 centimeters that converts to about 13.84 inches and then if you do your estimation uh, for the scale taking the scale into consideration that represents a 40 foot long animal just over just a little bit over 40 feet long and uh, Mr. Adamar he's got that down here as well so very 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 accurate with his scaling and uh, I definitely appreciate that because I am a stickler for accuracy 
with uh, my uh, dyno models for sure. So um, we're going to take a uh, closer look at our guy here. The first thing you uh, want you to notice is uh, the uh, pose it's in is uh, made possible by the peg that was uh, affixed to the model's left foot. So you can see that. Now we're going to take a closer look at the uh, head sculpt and go head to tail. So starting with the head uh, close up and keep in mind I've got him back on his base because uh, it'll make it easier to navigate and maneuver as we uh, inspect this model. So you see the uh, color scheme we've got going on here. Um, I got to choose the uh, color that I wanted and I went with this primarily green tones with uh, the uh, it getting of course melting into a lighter color shade of green and some speckles greenish colored speckles uh, on there as far as the uh, skull is concerned you see that it uh, starts off with that green and then it goes down uh, you should be able to see uh, the attention to detail that Adamar was able to uh, instill in his models. I can see the uh, the scalation there in the fenestra. It's just uh, it's crazy how accurate how the attention to detail is just is just awesome. We've got the nice striping going on uh, from the uh, upper portion of the uh, skull and jaw to the lower half of the jaw. As you can see there, use my pointer here going nice and we've got some uh, light coloration right there in the snout the eye is uh, he even has the eye looking very nice the eye is uh, basically a, uh, a a kind of dark yellow with a black pupil and uh, he's got he's got uh, when I turn to the front a little bit hopefully you guys can see but you could see the uh, nasal passageways going with that, so pretty cool. The crest is uh, is uh, present there. He's got some uh, nice uh, paint apps there. We'll uh, take a look at that when I uh, turn him up, so we can see him from the top going down. You can uh, see the uh, as I was talking about the speckles. That he's got going on there. That's just nice. We start off this dark, dark, uh, like a brownish color right there. Then it uh, just melts into a greenish color all the way down. As I tilt so you can see what I'm talking about. It's just nice. And of course the uh, soft underbelly has got that green and cream color. It's like a cream color but with uh, a uh, greenish, a very light greenish wash over it. The... Uh, Four limbs are um, that dark type of green, and it's got some speckling going on right there, too. He's got the claws painted black, and uh, that's very nice. I'm going to have to uh, pick my man up off of the stand so you can see the hind limbs and what's going on with that. So you see that in the speckling. And then look at the front. He's got uh, the claws are painted uh, dark on that as well. Take a look at that underbelly. Adamar even was gracious enough to uh, bless us with a cloaca. Attention to detail. Speaking of, look at the stretches with the skin there. That's fantastic. With the right leg uh, stepping forward, we've got skin stretching right there. That is just uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, and uh, you know, it's a uh, it's just amazing that uh, this is a, uh, a sole individual and not some company. And then you're looking at the tail. I'll move it back a little bit so you can see that going on. And uh, we've got uh, vertical striping, if you will. Very wide stripes and uh, patches of the, uh, the color of the actual, the base color coming through. Looking very, very nice. Very, very nice. 
moving it down. I shouldn't have moved it that way because my hand got in the way. Well, no one wants to see that. My arm, no one wants to see that. We want to see the model. And then you see it uh, flowing all the way down, very consistent with that striping, turning our Tyranno Titan around. You see that it just continues. We're going to just come back up with it. And uh, yeah, it's looking quite nicely there and uh, let me move kind of this way so you could see some more of it from the other side so very nice and then get it back up to the uh, to the skull we even have an articulated jaw so we've got that now I'm going to take him off the base again so we can look inside that mouth jaw tried to go shut on me the jaw is kind of loose but it is what it is I'll have to hold it open hopefully my hand won't be in the way as we look in there I don't know how well we could see but you can see that uh, nice paint uh, pink and of course the uh, teeth painted individually very very nice very clean it's got the tongue in there as well that is just so uh, so nice, so well uh, professionally done. I am very happy with this model. You guys can tell because I'm just fawning all over it. Now you're probably wondering why uh, the Tyranno Titan is in this particular pose where he kind of looks up. That's because uh, Adamar also made a uh, another model of... Uh, a dinosaur that uh, existed, coexisted with Tyranno Titan in the same area, same time period, and uh, it was a prey animal. And uh, you can guess what type of uh, prey animal it was simply for the fact that uh, uh, a creature the size of Tyranno Titan is looking up. So I'll let you guys use your imagination and uh, figure out what it was. Basically, uh, what what uh, what subgroup it was and what the species was itself. But uh, yes, that's uh, that's how the uh, the Tyranno Titan actually looks. And uh, like I said, I am quite elated taking a look at the included base. Our friend Adamar didn't spare anything on the uh, base either. This is just as uh, detailed as the model itself. You see it's got the, uh, the name tag right there on the front of the base. And look how professionally done that is. It's just absolutely spectacular. We'll look at the bottom first and save the best for last. Nice padded bottom so you won't scratch up anything. Very, very nice. And now we're going to look at the base itself. So you see, we've got uh, these uh, pine cones growing out of the ground there. Nice sandy, sandy surface with rocks. We've got a, a dead branch over there, pretty nice. So uh, this is uh, indicative of what the uh, environment was back then. We're talking about the early Cretaceous in Argentina, where a lot of Carcharodontosaurids uh, existed, which is funny considering that Carcharodontosaurus itself was in Africa, but uh, you know, that's how it goes. That's uh, it was the first described, I believe, out of all of the uh, all of the species that ended up in this subgroup. So it got the honor of it being named after it. Here's what it looks like on the sides there that don't have the uh, name tag. Nice rocky. It just uh, the attention to detail is awesome. It's just strictly awesome. I am so, so happy with this purchase. So you can get an idea of how accurately scaled this model is. I'm going to start our comparisons off with a guy we usually end our comparisons with. And that would be, in this case, Cameron, the Tyrannosaurus Rex from PNSO. So, uh, you see the uh, size uh, difference there. Uh, there is no real difference. I'll move Cameron up. He may cover up 
hour tight ran a titan a bit but i just want you guys to know that um, even though you can't see if i can adjust the camera a little bit just a little bit there you go so there's more of uh, the tail showing you could see that they are more or less the same size. In fact, uh, Cameron is just a little bit bigger as, in my opinion, he should be. Considering uh, which T-Rex Cameron is based off of, it would be larger than what the, uh, estimate, the average estimated size of Tyrannal Titan would be. Now we're just going to work our way up in size with other Carcharodontosaurids. We have Maraxis Gigas leading off right now. This guy shouldn't be up next, but uh, this is a PNSO model, and uh, he was made undersized in my estimation, um, but uh, it is what it is. This was the, uh, the model, the dino that we started our video with. Carcara down to source and uh, also keep in mind that these models that I'm comparing the Tyrannal Titan with are uh, all from PNSO. Next up to bat we have Mapusaurus who rivaled Tyrannal Titan in size. Also rivaling Tyrannal Titan in size and possibly exceeding it is Giganotosaurus itself and because I'm dissatisfied with PNSO's Carcharodontosaurus, at least in terms of its size. I had to go and pull out the GR Toys slash Howlin' Good when they were collaborative, their Carcharodontosaurus, which is more in scale. As uh, you can no doubt see here, looking uh, pretty nice. This is what I'm talking about. And allow me to introduce one of two bonuses that Mr. Pereira blessed me with. This right here is a uh, 135th scale human being and uh, to my belief it is modeled after uh, one Ian Malcolm played by Jeff Goldblum in the uh, Jurassic series. Now you see the detail on this very very nice and uh, he has, you won't be able to really see it I don't think, maybe that uh, he's got uh, 1.8 meters, which is supposed to be the average height of a human. Um, if this is supposed to be Jeff Goldblum as Ian Malcolm, then uh, it's undersized because Jeff is way larger than 1.8 meters. But it does serve the purpose of uh, being the uh, size, the scale of an average human at 135. So if I can get it to stand right there, and yes, so now you could see what the average male would look like next to a Tyranno Titan. And uh, I thank Adamar for this because this will replace my chalk white 135th scale human and uh, look a little bit more, um, yeah, more real. Looks like a, it looks like a genuine human being and not a, uh, a model carved out of uh, wax or something. So my final thoughts are my first thoughts and you just saw the mouth just opened the mouth is a little bit loose so that will be a uh, one of the uh, cons got to keep it real with the review but uh, not enough to make me uh, dislike or be disappointed in this model at all but uh, the Tyranno Titan from and I'm going to try your name one final time the entire thing once again apologies sir if I'm butchering it Adamar Pereira do Nascimento the model, the sculptor, the creator of this beautiful specimen, the Tyranno Titan Chubutensis, 135th scale. The accuracy all around is just on and cracking. I mean, from the uh, the the uh, just the design of the uh, of the animal. Uh, granted, we have um, fragmentary uh, fossils, but uh, what we have. Scientists were able to extrapolate uh, what you see there. They were able to determine that it was a Carcharodontosaur, and uh, they were able to determine more or less its size range, and uh, it puts it up there as among the largest predators to ever exist. I tell you, Argentina was something else, especially in the early Cretaceous, but they had to. Um, 
I'm supposed to be giving final thoughts, but some other things are coming to mind. The first thing I'll say is uh, I did leave out that uh, Adamart has made the Therapods with lips. So uh, if you didn't notice that before, I'm telling you that now. This uh, this model is lipped. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, uh, speaking of um, how large Carcharodontosaurus grew, um, scientists believe that uh, unlike Tyrannosaurus that grew rapidly and uh, possibly uh, just, uh, you know, came to a uh, an upper limit halt probably in their um, their early their early 20s and that they lived short lives they think 20 to 30 uh in the case of carcarodontosaurs the evidence at least according to uh moraxis from what they were seeing they appear to just continually grow now whether that's true or not i can kind of sort of believe it because of uh the prey animals that uh lived alongside most of the carcarodontosaurs the carcarodontosaurs had the uh the honor of being around the absolute largest land creatures, terrestrial creatures to ever roam the earth, the titanosaurs. So, um, uh, you know, they were probably growing in an attempt to keep up, though nature is uh, very, very efficient. Uh, nature knows there's only an upper limit uh, where a predator would be effective in terms of size. So uh, getting up into the 40-foot range, I'm not including Spinosaurus because, uh, or Spinosaurus itself because it actually uh, apparently adapted uh, to eating fish and stuff that way, you know, and its legs were smaller, so it wasn't really running down anything on land anyway. So it adapted for aquatic living. That's why the legs were short and it was able to grow as long as it did. But in terms of terrestrial predators that did hunt on land, it seems like about 43, 44 feet would be the absolute max that they could grow to because that's about the size that we find, um, they estimate, they they formally estimated Giganotosaurus to be up to 46 feet. The same with Carcharodontosaurus. Um, Tyrannosaurus rex, for the longest, was estimated to only get to about 40 feet. I say only. But Sue is about 42 feet long. And Scotty is bigger than she is as uh, uh, Scotty has exceeded the 42 foot range. So um, we know that uh, Tyrannosaurus, at least some of the time, got uh, to probably closing in on 43 feet. And uh, they've re-estimated the Giganotosaurus and the Carcharodontosaurus to not be as large as uh, 46 feet. So they're either right there with T-Rex or, uh, as a lot of people would be elated to know, or at the very least believe in their heart of hearts, that Tyrannosaurus Rex has regained its throne as the largest terrestrial predator that hunts terrestrial animals, I have to put that caveat in there because there will always be the Spinosaurus that is clearly larger uh, to ever exist. So um, a lot of people are happy or will be happy to know that little thing. Anyway, with this, uh, this model, I'm very happy. Uh, I've received a few from uh, Mr. Adamar and uh, I'm going to be reviewing them next. In fact, the next the next subject of review is going to be the very reason that we've got this review right here. So uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, while you're staying tuned, like the video. Give me a thumbs up, especially if you like this model. Show the love for that. Uh, show the love for Adam. I'm going to leave his information, uh, how you can get in contact with him in my description below and uh, like I said give that thumbs up give me your comments on what you think and um, definitely subscribe if you haven't uh, so you could get more of this type of content for sure and uh, if you want to be notified for this type of content hit that bell while you're down there and notified you will be on behalf of Mr. Adam Pereira and the Tyranno Titan Chubutensis I just want to say thank you guys. This is Ruckasaurus Rex. You guys take care until next time. Peace.